All right, Dana, we're going to come to you now. Dana, how are you doing today? Okay. I'm good, thank you. Um, so a little bit about Frederick. Yes. We are about an hour outside of Baltimore and D.C. I have about 150 sworn members of our department. I've got a property and evidence staff consisting of two um, property and evidence custodians. One is former sworn. Uh, he retired and came back as a civilian, but both of them are uh, civilians. We've always had civilians in our property room. I think for us, it just gives some consistency and you don't have to worry about people being transferred or rotated in and out of an assignment if they're sworn. So that seems to work the best for us. Um, the thing that I was going to talk about today is um, we are an accredited agency with CALEA. And I know that for many agencies out there that work with the accreditation process, that um, particular standard 8416 can be tricky for agencies to try to maintain and document compliance with. So what we've done is a couple of things. We've put together a form that we use for our unannounced and semi-annual inventories and inspections, and we can hand that to whoever comes in to do it for us. And it's a simple check sheet. It gives them instructions for what they're supposed to be looking for, and then we simply scan and attach that as a proof of compliance. Uh, along with that, we developed a policy for the more in-depth inspections that we have that actually is a step-by-step -step for what the inspector or the auditor is supposed to be looking for. Um, a lot of times, uh, you want those inspections to be more than they just went to your shelf and counted and made sure that everything was on the shelf. I ask that they specifically look at things like um, our found property shelves. We're only supposed to keep found items for 45 days, um, and then they can be disposed of. So when that auditor comes in, they should be looking at those items on that found shelf. And if I've got things that are sitting there that are six months old, um, they shouldn't be there. Uh, and that should be documented in that report. But an auditor needs to know what to look for in order to be able to generate a useful report for your agency. Now, I have, I have a question about that. In fact, I have a lot of questions that are just circling around <laughs> my mind right now. You know, one of the things that I've understood about CALEA is that the, the, their actual, the property room and the audit that goes into the, I mean, first of all, mm -hmm. it, the, the property room is only part of an entire CALEA audit. I mean, that, that, as you're talking about your entire agency is audited. We're talking about the specific component that is your evidence room. Is that correct? Correct. So why did you, I'm curious, this policy you came up with, is this something you decided to do on your own or is this something that CLIA dictated you do? No, that's something that we decided to come up with on our own. One of the things that I wanted to be able to have is some kind of consistency among the different reports. Um, this year an auditor is gonna be one person, next year it's gonna be somebody completely different. And so depending on how good your auditor is, and how well they can write a report, you can get something that's either really good and very helpful, or you get something that's not so good and not so helpful. Um, so in order to make it, to ensure that it was covering everything that I wanted to see in there, um, and that the commission was gonna be looking for um, as a part of our CALEA requirements, that's why we came up with those guidelines. And we actually asked for them to look for a lot more things um, I think then we go above and beyond what that standard asks for. So I'm, I'm laughing a little bit because if I were to put this in layman terms as a business owner, this would be like the IRS coming in to audit me and me telling them, hey, you know, what you guys, did, yeah, well, you know, this seems like, which this is fantastic, but you are the auditee telling the auditor you know, well, you guys send in different people, we get different results. We actually want to be more audited than what you're saying. Why? That does feel weird. I just want to make sure everything's being covered. Um, have you, and, you know, maybe a better, a, a better question would have been, do, does the CLIA auditor, do they appreciate that you've done this? I think it gives consistency to that report 
So whenever we have to provide that documentation to them, um, you're able to go in and quickly highlight exactly what you need them to be able to see. And it's pretty much in the same place in every report. Um, any agency that's accredited knows that um, the easier you make your proofs of compliance for an, uh, a, a CSM or the, um, the auditor the, from CALEA who's looking at your documentation, the easier that you can get that assessor in and out of your standard, the, fa the better your whole review for the entire agency for all of your proofs are going to go. So that's our goal, to get a, a clear, concise, well-written report um, that they don't have any reason to pick apart and try to find things wrong with. That would be really hard to do when you're telling them, I want you to be more thorough than maybe you normally would be. And I'm going to tell you how to be more thorough about what you're doing. I mean, again, kudos to you. Have you found out, do they take this report? Have they used it elsewhere? Or do you, I mean, do you know if it's being used elsewhere? We've had a lot of people ask for copies of the policy, and we've had um, auditors actually download our reports to take them to use as examples for other agencies. The other thing that you have to remember is the people that are coming in to audit your property room, chances are they've never set foot in your property room before. Yeah. So they really don't know what they're looking at. They don't know how you're set up. They don't know how you're organized. Um, our sworn members, very seldom enter any of our property and evidence areas. Um, and it's always interesting because the people that come in and do these inspections for us internally, they always say, wow, there's a whole lot more to this than I ever knew. Yeah. Um, and so it's very educational for them as well. Yeah. That 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 comment right there is is what has always shocked me a little bit. Now, obviously, I'm not a police organization and ever gone through a CLIA audit, but when I talk to a lot of agencies that have, it is amazing the differences of what I hear. It, like like what you've said, the thoroughness of it, the report results. I mean, they can they can just because it's CLIA audit, the the results can be very very different. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a couple of questions are coming in here. Uh, who do you have come in and do your audits prior to CALEA audit, or do you? So all of these, um, the the way the standard works is we have to do unannounced inspections every year, and then we have to do an annual audit every year. Um, all of those are part of the CALEA requirements. So we stagger those out. Um, throughout the course of the year. We know who is going to do certain audits can be done internally by um, our assistant supervisor for our section. She doesn't work day to day on, in the property and evidence room, but she can do those unannounced inspections. Those are the ones where they're just checking to make sure your clean, the property evidence areas are clean, everything's organized well, you pull a couple of things off the shelf to make sure that they're packaged correctly. The more in-depth ones that we do every year, those you're gonna be pulling in people from outside your, um, your section. Um, some have to be done specifically for us by um, certain parts uh, or components of our department. So um, I hope I answered your question. You did, and I, th I think a, 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 an easier way to answer that is, number one, you, Dana, as, as a supervisor, you're doing your own auditing all the time, making sure okay. things are the way it needs to be, and, and that's being done in preparation for these unannounced audits by command staff at your place, and then uh, is there another step in between CALEA coming in? Do you have any third-party agencies that ever audit instead of CALEA, or do you literally go you, command staff, CALEA is the next step? Um, it's pretty much those three. Um, it's at, most of them are the just internal, and then the commission or the CALEA audit is actually they're just looking at the documentation that they were that we're uploading to those standards. Okay, uh, I'm sure questions are coming in. Somebody has asked, "How do they get a copy of this SOP that's on the screen?" And I, <laughs> I would imagine this is. I was going to say, this is going to become a very popular document. And just like David's documents that I talked about, at the end of this, I'll show you how you guys get a copy of, of what is on the screen. So just to elaborate real quick, these are, the, these are the standard operating procedures. This is 
and it looks like, how many pages is this? It looks like a six page document. And so you'll give this to an auditor. Explain to me really quickly, what, what was that other document? This one right here, what does this do? That's the inspection form that we use. So whenever you're doing, um, like I said, like those semi-annual inspections, those ones that are quick, you're just going in and looking for the highlights. You know, is everything clean and well organized? Um, these are the things that you checked for. Uh, so along with the big annual audit and the big unannounced inspection, they will do this form as well as generate a whole separate report. For the two semi-annual audits, this is the only form that we use, and that's all that we need. We just fill that out, and it's signed by everybody. Everything's run all the way up through the command. Um, if we find any discrepancies, those are noted, and um, we also have to document how any issues were fixed. Um, but that's then that's the only document that we need. Yeah, excellent. And both of these documents will be posted out uh, in that shareable area. So again, I'll come back to that. I, I do have, I don't know if this is a question or a statement. I'm, I'm just going to read it out loud. And, and if this is a question, Dana, you can answer it. If it's a statement, you can give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. All right. We'll go with okay. one of those. If an audit finds a mistake, it might come in time to prevent a civil lawsuit that would have, uh, have arisen out of a hole in their uh, procedures. I don't, that doesn't feel like a question. I mean, I, maybe they're talking about the audit, the, the the third party audit where, but I guess that that's what Dana and their command staff is doing. They're doing their own internal audits so that if there is a problem, they're finding it before Clea comes in the door. I mean, obviously everybody wants to be in a position when a Clea, com, a Clea comes in, it's a perfect audit. You don't want Clea finding mistakes. You want to find those ahead of time. So I'm just curious with with all of this you've ever laid. How many Clea audits have, have has been? You said every year. How many how many years has have they come in and done this audit? Well, they don't actually come in and audit us. All of these audits are internal. So we use a combination of the form and the policy. Um, we conduct the audits ourselves. Um, but then we are giving them the results of the audit. So we're giving them all of the documentation that shows exactly what we did. Um, and uh, like I said, if there were any issues, how we fixed them. Uh, we also, in addition to the form, um, that policy gets uploaded. Uh, we will also attach all of the inventory sheets that we use and we generate those right out of tracker. Um, so we use the inventory, uh, component of Tracker to generate all of our inventory reports and all of the documentation, whether an item was on the shelf, whether it was missing, and if it was missing, what they did, what the steps that they took to try to find it. But that's the thing, that's, for example, right there. If I'm an auditor and I've never worked in a property room, and I go in and I'm working with somebody on the property staff and they're on shelf one, and they're supposed to find an item, and it's not there. There are logical steps that your property staff should take to try to figure out where that item might be. So in our case, chances are they'll look a shelf above, they'll look a shelf below, um, because maybe it just got put on the wrong shelf. Um, but then if it's not right there, then the auditor should watch the property staff person go back to the computer they should be able to pull up what other items may have been checked in that day um, along with the items they're looking for and where were those things shelved maybe that item that's missing got shelved you know with those items instead of where the property custodian put it in the in the system so but if you've never worked in property and evidence before you don't even know if what the property staff is doing to try to figure out the problem if those steps are making sense. Yeah. So my thought when I hear all of this is that while this, while the concept of the discussion here is CALEA accreditation, this is real, this is how you cover your butt accreditation. You know, when somebody starts to question what you're doing in your evidence room and you know how, you know, so if a defense attorney comes along, when you're able to put these documents down in front of them and let them know we're doing audits, command staff is doing audits, this is the type of stuff that overwhelms them with, hey, this is gonna be a lot harder to find a hole in their system. Cause again, that's all they're looking for. I've always said that when it comes to defense attorneys, they're, they're not, they're looking for the hole. They're simply looking to prove doubt. They don't even have to be right. If they simply get doubt introduced, 
that's where it becomes a problem. And so when you're doing all of this stuff and you have all these documents that show that you're you're providing this to Kalia, as a matter of fact, just being able to say out loud, we actually push a, a Kalia to do more than that what they would require us to do. You begin to shut those doors of where people can find some doubt inside your process. I mean, I see this here right now, and I would say this is going to be a lot harder for somebody to say oh, you're not doing this the right way. Um, but I, there is a good question here. Have you, have, found, have, you have, have you found that the defense has tried to tear apart your evidence room policies because you are accredited? No, no, that has not happened. Yeah. I, I think something that goes along with that, people have asked me as an evidence software vendor, have you ever been called into court? And in, and in 15 years now, I'm sure I'm gonna blow this up today and somehow with the world being locked down next yeah. week, called into court because I've announced this, but in all of our 15 years, we've never been called into court. And I think that a large reason behind that is because of a lot of the control systems we have in place in our software, it's a lot harder to pick apart oh, wait a minute, that doesn't look very good because you have a nice PDF generated chain of custody. It's when you don't have those things that they become a problem. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Um, let me see here. Did you run? Uh, during your audit, does the auditor check any items out and open to see if the item stated on the package is indeed what is inside the package? Do, do, have, have your auditors ever gone that far? We have had some people open some packages, yes. We don't encourage that. Um, and it also it would depend on the item. Um, if it's a major crime, I'm not encouraging them to open anything that's been sealed with that evidence tape. Uh, and we try to use for some of the high risk stuff, we don't store a lot of money in our property vault. All of our money gets transferred to the city for deposit. But for the money that is temporarily in my vault, it's all in a clear um, money bag. So you can actually see inside it without needing to open it up. Yeah. And I'm just curious if, if let's say you did go down the road and somebody wanted to open up a bag that was was sealed, do you have a policy on that? Would you bring the officer in for that or, or how would you handle that if that was done? Um, the officer wouldn't necessarily need to come in for it, but depending on what it is, we may have the officer do that or ask the crime scene, um, our crime scene staff to, to do that. Good, okay. Well, I'm at the 20 minute mark. I told you, I was. did that feel like 20 minutes? It went pretty fast. Okay, well, that was good. You did a fantastic job. Thank you for sharing that with us. And uh, I don't uh, I don't have any more questions posted on my screen when it comes to that. But again, the, the most important one is gonna be, where do I get a copy of these uh, this SOP and this document? And again, I'm gonna show you guys where to get that here in another 15 minutes. So 